But yeah, I'm just coming out really quickly to say, hey, because I haven't talked to you guys in a while. Um, all last week I went live and did the Oracle card class. And so I wanted you guys to join me over there if you wanted to learn how to read Oracle cards and you wanted to learn how to read them free. Excuse all the mess here in the background. I'm about to lounge here and I have some homework that I wanted to get to, but I just finished my intuition one-on-one workshop. We just had our second class. Hey Taylor, how are you? How are things going with your new job? Um, so I just have finished this one-on-one -on -one class for the intuition workshop, but I also included human energy because I think that those two things are tied together. And I just wanted to share with you guys one of the epiphanies that came through that class that you may want to be aware of or that I want you to sit with. So in this class, I was teaching people what intuition was, why it was important, how it worked, how to hear it, how to discern it from ego and fear and anxiety and how to tap into it. Hey, Brenda, how are you, girl? And then, um, so I was teaching them how to do those things. And then in turn today, what I taught them was about human energy why we all have a certain energy and frequency that we emit, why we pick up on other people's energy, how that feels, how that happens, how you can stop doing it. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Um, and so this is an Rotonda, hey girl. <laughs> so this is the number one thing that I kind of wanted to just come in and share with you from that two day class that we and the other ladies that were in the class had together. And that was this one thing, and it's scientific, and the reason why I want you to know about it is because I think that a lot of the times people discredit spirituality. I know if you guys are all here, you don't, but people discredit spirituality when in fact, most of the spiritual principles that I, I discussed and other people that know what they're talking about discuss, they're built and steeped in scientific fact. There are a lot of journal articles that are starting to come out about people that are empathic. And what... I want for you is to be really good at what you do, really good at mastering your life. And the number one problem that I have when people say that they're empathic is that they say they're empathic or they're highly sensitive. And because of that, they feel all these different feels um, and emotions and let the, these things get the better of them. That is bullshit, guys. That is so much bullshit. And whenever you make statements about you being sensitive, hey, Natalie, or highly empathic, and saying that you are picking up on other people's energy, what that tells me is that you are not in control of who you are and your own energy. Also, what it tells me is that you need to gain a little bit more knowledge about what empathy truly means. Most people say that there are about three different types of empathy. There is emotional empathy, there is cognitive empathy, hey girl, and there is um, compassionate empathy. The people that are saying that they're highly sensitive, and this could be you, so I want you to listen up. People that are saying that they are highly sensitive or empathic and they're picking up on these energies and these ne negative energies from environments or, or people are affecting them are coming from a place of emotional empathy. That is the lowest form of empathy that you can connect with. That empathy means that you are connecting with someone else's negative energy or someone else's distress and making that your own, bringing that into your aura and feeling that energy. That is a no-no and that's where you want to evolve from. Where you want to start to train your empathy to come from is a place of compassion or a place of cognitive empathy where you can, hey Amir, where you can understand what people are thinking, what they are feeling, the distress that they're going through, et cetera, but you are not picking up on that energy. There's a big difference. Compassionate energy and cog or compassionate empathy and cognitive empathy take you from a place of emotionally empathizing with people that are on lower planes and moving into a space where, yes, you still love them. Yes, you still can hold space for them, but it's not negatively impacting who you are and how you move in the world. There's a difference. That's what I want you to pay attention to. Understanding, correct, but also understanding and not allowing lower places to lower people or lower environments to throw you off track. Um, so Amir, I don't know if you know, 
I'm going on a rant about highly sensitive and empathic people that are using that as an excuse to not take control of the ability to regulate their own energy versus other people's energy because at the end of the day it's taking your power away and if you don't get that in check and if you don't learn how to come from a space of higher um, intelligence and levels of empathy is going to continue to dissipate your power and if you want to know what that feels like in class we talked about something called um, your usefulness goes down but for us and maybe our power goes down our ability to want to move forward goes down our drive goes down all of these things start to go down because energy wants to create equilibrium so i'm gonna leave it at that but what i yeah you need to you need to watch the replay of this first part so but what i'm really going in on is the number two thing that i find with the clients that i work with when they say that they are highly sensitive or that they're empathic and they find that these energies are impacting their lives is that they have some sort of trauma that they have not dealt with when people experience trauma, they tend to be more empathetic or sensitive. And the reason for that is because that, is, sorry, I'm, it's dark in here, that trauma has made them more hypervigilant, anxious, and aware and sensitive to the people around them and their environments. So there's a difference, right? So then are you really high, highly sensitive and empathic because you're coming from a place that's for your highest and best good? Or are you highly sensitive and empathic and maybe even picking up on things that are inaccurate because you have PTSD and you have trauma that has made you hyper vigilant, hyper aware, hypersensitive that you need to deal with. There is a difference. I'm going to leave you with that. But I just wanted to say that because that just had me going in in class and I wanted to share this with you. There were so many gems in there that I could go on and on. But yeah. Um, hey, Kim, anybody have any questions about what I'm talking about? This It, it sounds harsh, but I'm, I'll let you guys know at the end of the day, there is a difference. There are different levels to this shit. So if you are on this emotional, empathic level, then you may need to do some growth and some healing and some maturing, especially if you have experienced trauma. And when I say trauma, I don't mean it doesn't have to be what we consider big. It doesn't have to be abuse. It doesn't have to be anything like that. Trauma can be anything that impacted our lives very significantly that has changed who we are. And usually it changed who we are in a negative way. So, you know, just because one of you may have experienced emotional abuse or whatever, and then for some of you, maybe your trauma was not getting enough hugs or love or not being heard, we all are going to integrate that trauma very similarly and be a little bit broken. And that makes us hyper aware and hypersensitive. And when you're hyper aware and hypersensitive and not practicing empathy from a place of detachment, you don't even know if what you're picking up on is accurate or inaccurate because you haven't taken the time to heal your true emotional traumas that leave you stuck, that leave you in a state of lower vibrational being or open to something that science calls potential energy, where there's always this potential for somebody to come in and knowingly or unknowingly take your energy or you knowingly or unknowingly let people take your energy because energy wants to flow in a certain direction. We learn this in science class, okay? All right, yeah, Natalie, you, I, I don't think people think about it this way. And I, you know, it's deep. And I am somebody that likes to combine, I want you to be masters of your life. So I'm not just telling you spiritual information. I'm telling you spiritual information that you can marry with intellectual information because I think they are both highly important. This is not just love and light. This is how can we integrate true spirituality and marry it with things that have been scientifically proven in order for us to integrate these things into our life to level up. And I think that a lot of times, like I said, my mission is to put it 
get out here in that way because people miss the mark. They only pick up on um, love and light or good vibes or empathy or highly sensitive. There are so many different things that happen and hyper vigilant, hyper awareness and emotional empathy is not the same as being compassionately empathetic in a detached state so that you can live your best life and not allow people to throw you off track. Uh, Kim, you said this has been um, coming up for you. You open up your Facebook and it brought you straight here. Maybe it was meant to be, girl. You need to start from the beginning, watch the re replay, and see if you missed anything else. Indra, thank you for joining. I was just coming on here to do a little bit of rant, a rant after my two-day workshop about intuition and protecting energy because I feel like a lot of people are getting sold a bag of goods that it's okay to be highly sensitive and empathic and that... That's, it's okay to be walking out in the world like this, but it's really not okay to come from a place of lower vibrational energy, even if you have good intentions. What is okay is to learn how to move into a space of maybe a higher level of empathy so that it serves you for your highest and best good, and it serves other people as well. What about being sensitive to vibrational energy? This is different, right? Like healing energy, or is it all tied? So Natalie, it, it is the same, no matter what you are, okay, let me, let me back up. For the most part, it is the same. Basically, whether you are coming from a traumatic point of view and you are now hyper vigilant and hyper aware and hypersensitive to people and environments around you, whether you're coming from that space or you're coming from a place where you are using that energy to be more intuitive or to be uh, using it for a more high vibrational purpose, essentially it's the same. You are hyper vigilant about what you are sensing in your world through people, or excuse me, among people and environments. So the hypervigilance is the same. The space in which that hypervigilance come from is different. Are you coming from a place of trauma or are you coming from a place of detachment but still able to pick up on these different energies and use them for your highest and best good? And that's why I say there's levels to it. Um, usually what I find if you're coming from a place of hypersensitivity and empathy, the messages that you bring in may be inaccurate and they may be skewed from the healing that you haven't done yet that you need to do from whatever trauma that is still living in yourself that you haven't made peace with. So I hope that makes sense. So for instance, if you did experience a trauma and you're hypersensitive, then what you maybe pick up on as being an attack on you may not in fact be an attack on you, but because you haven't healed what you need to heal, yes, you are still hypersensitive and hypervigilant, but that doesn't mean that what you are interpreting is accurate. However, if you are able to move up from that space of emotional empathy to compassionate or cognitive energy, you will find that you can still pick up on um, these different energies, but because you have done the work and you are trying to use this energy for positivity and you come from a space of detachment from the emotional aspect of it and are able to pick up on just purely objective sensory information, then you start to be able to use it more effectively and more accurately. And so that is another reason that I always, I'm just going on a rant. This is why another reason why I always tell you guys, you need to, there is so many people, especially with this Neptune and Pisces stuff, people popping up out the woodworks that want to be your psychic. They want to be your spiritual mentor. They want to be your leader. They want to be your coach when they may have some shit that they haven't dealt with and their interpretation can be coming from that place of emotional empathy, hypersensitivity. And um, that in turn, they may not intentionally even know that what they're doing is not accurate or optimal for you, but it's not. And so you really need to be very intentional about the people that you let in your life when you are doing 
these type of things? Are they living the life? Are they doing the work? Are they having a lot of drama or are they, do they have balance? Is it all love and light or do they have practicality? You know, use your discernment a little bit when you bring these people in spaces because being, again, we interchange a lot of terms in our society, but hypervigilant, hypersensitive, from an emotional empathetic standpoint is not the same as hypervigilant, hyper awareness, hypersensitivity from a compassionate and cognitive empathetic standpoint. They're not the same thing. Although you do pick up on the energy in the same modalities. I hope that makes sense, Natalie. Anybody have else have any questions before I close out my little rant? I have a list of some topics from Amir, and then I forgot the other person that gave me the list of topics, but I just want you guys to know that I will soon be uh, releasing the dates for our masterclass for um, this month. And I, because you guys gave me a list, I think the most common one that both of Amir and the this other young lady mentioned was around boundaries. So we probably will start with the boundaries. Yes, Kim, make sure you watch the replay. Anybody that didn't come in at the beginning and wants to really get back to the root of what I was talking about, make sure you watch it from the beginning because I really think that this is very important for you to understand. I don't want you to be a victim in life, nor do I want you to be an unintended or an unintentional victim of someone else or something else. So you really need to learn this and take responsibility for this for yourself because you are the only person that can control your energy and the outcomes in your life. No matter how much you want to give your power away, this is you being in control of your life. Oh, Sarah. Sarah was the other person that also left topics. So if you have things that you want me to talk about, make sure you go back into the group. There's a post that I posted Wednesday, last Wednesday asking for topics and discussions. For July, we will talk about boundaries. But then from there, I'll just look at the things that you guys tell me you want to talk about, and then we'll go from there. So I'll have dates up soon. I'll pop in in a few days and see how you guys are doing. Sit on this. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, rebuttal, I am open to learning too. I'm here to learn and grow with you. So leave your comments, questions, concerns, rebuttals if you want to teach me something too. I'm not here to be in all be all. This is just my interpretation of what I learned and I would love to hear how you feel about it as well. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good night. Bye.